All right. Now with the Quran, we've got the we've we've got the uh the 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 the, the King James Arabic version. So you've got to be basically what they th- consider to be the Textus Receptus. Are there other oh, yeah. ver- are there other versions of the Quran? Well, there are, but Muslims will deny that there are. There's one in the uh uh the uh National Library of Yemen that is uh contains some important variants but it's uh, kind of unclear what exactly they are people know that they are they've seen them but the yemenis guard the thing very carefully they won't let it be photographed they won't let it be studied uh it's the same kind of thing we know there were variants at the time of uthman which is going back to the seventh century um but uh they were burned by uthman and so uh the the Variance, the very existence of the variance shows that the uh, received story, as I said, of the Quran dropping from uh, heaven in perfect form is uh, impossible. But we don't have a whole lot of information on what exactly the variants are. And have have we seen an original manuscript? Do we do we an have original manuscript? Well, of the I guess Quran? It, I, yeah, I guess it would be the one that Gabriel dropped from heaven. Do we ha- do they claim uh-huh. to have that? No, he didn't. He, he dictated. He didn't. Ah, uh, he didn't get didn't written like instructions. Didn't it down like a golden um, there tablet. There are some thing. very old ones, and what's notable about those, actually, is that they don't have a lot of the marks, the diacritical marks that distinguish one letter from another in Arabic. A lot of letters in Arabic are exactly the same stroke, the ex- exactly the same mark, but then you put various dots above or below it, and that makes it one letter or another. But the original Quran doesn't have those dots, nor does it have the vowel markings. And so really there's quite a lot of possible variation in the text of the Quran, although the official text is established, it is not the original manuscript. All right. Robert Spencer, author of The Complete Infidel's Guide to the Quran, because that's what you and I are, Christian. We're the infidels. It, uh, Robert, actually, it could be worse. We're, 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 we're not the pigs. That's good. <laughs> Isn't it? Okay. Now, in case somebody has never read the Quran, so we're... We hear stories that, well, aren't there stories in there about Noah and Moses and Abraham? How do the stories of the Quran compare with historical figures like Adam and Noah and Moses and Solomon? Well, Adam, Noah, Moses and Solomon, all those guys and more are in the Quran. Uh, and exact same story that we see in the, in the, in the Old Testament? Yeah, the, the Old Testament prophets, most of them are in the Quran. And Old Testament stories of the Old Testament prophets. Are in the Quran. The difference is that in the Quran, Noah and uh, Abraham and Moses and all the rest of them, they're all Muslims and they taught Islam. And it was their followers who twisted their teachings to create what we know of today as Judaism. Uh huh. And do the okay. So with that, with that minor distinction. Were there other, are there other details that make it cl- clear that we're not talking about the same characters here, even though they've given them the same name? For instance, pick pick uh, pick Noah or pick Noah. How is the Noah of the Quran compared to the Noah of the Old Testament? Well, the Noah of the Quran really is actually closer than some of the others, but he, you know he does all the stuff that Noah does. He uh, builds the ark and he sails it through as the uh, uh, the uh, uh, unbelievers perish and so on. Um, but what's notable about the story of Noah, as is notable about virtually every story of all the prophets in the Quran, is that it's really, uh, they're, they're very sharp and, I, I think, conscious parallels to the story of Muhammad. That the uh, unbelievers scoff at Noah in the same language as the unbelievers scoff at Muhammad. And Noah responds to them by explaining who he is as a prophet in the same language Muhammad uses. And it seems that uh, all the stories of the prophets, Noah and the others, uh, uh, they all are told in order really to show that Muhammad is a prophet. And that is the overarching point. For one thing, the stories aren't arranged chronologically. There's not a historical section of the Quran. They are, the Quran is more like a series of sermons or uh, uh, that kind of discourse that is somebody exhorting people to, to make various points. And the prophets are only brought up in order to make those points. And one of the most important and common points that is made is that Muhammad really is a prophet in the line of the biblical prophets. And then the problem became that his teaching was not the same as theirs, and so he started to claim that they were all originally Muslims and that the, uh, the 
Bible was then changed by the wicked Jews and Christians to create Judaism and Christianity. Mm-hmm. And the manuscript evidence for that is problematic. Zero. All right. The name of the name of the book is The Complete Infidel's Guide to the Quran. Robert Spencer always takes his time and does a very careful job to analyze verse by verse. What does that book say? Is it a book of peace or is it exactly what many of us suspect it is? And that is the manual for terror. When we come back with Robert Spencer, he's going to spend some more time with us. Is there mysticism inside of the Quran? What about those passages of peace? What about the dimitude? You know... We let other religions be other religions. Is that true? And how did our president do when he was quoting the Quran when he gave his speech near Pakistan? We will tackle that with Robert Spencer next, The Complete Infidel's Guide to the Quran on Wretched Radio.